हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल वेन देर इज अ पी सी डिफेक्ट एंड वी हैव टू प्लेस दी आयल इन द सेल्कस मोस्ट कॉमनली वी यूज नॉन फोल्डेबल लार्जर ऑप्टिक आई ओ एल which is uh, the least expensive option for us now this is a case where uh, the patient had posterior polar cataract i have operated patient's other eye and this eye was operated elsewhere and the surgeon noted pc rupture so after anti vitrectomy a pmma iol of 6 mm optic and 12.5 mm oral diameter was placed in the sulcus and this patient was suffering from some refractive error you can see there is a cylinder as well as spherical error patient was driver by occupation so he was having trouble with the glares as the you can see the optic edge is coming in the pupillary area now what are the causes of decentration of this iol one haptic may be in the bag and other may be in the sulcus causing the tilt and decentration one of the haptic may be kinked or damaged and the sulcus diameter itself might be bigger than the iol size this is a 12.5 mm iol and the sulcus might be bigger so that may cause decentration zonular weakness lack of uh, proper sulcus space and vitreous prolapse can be other causes in this particular case as well now uh, we commonly use this iol in india for sulcus placement as it is the least expensive of all and we find fairly good results with this iol but as you can see in some cases it may not center very well in the sulcus and may need to be exchanged now here to take care of the against the rule astigmatism which is uh, because of the superior tunnel which was done by the surgeon to remove the nucleus probably once the rent was noted so that has caused against the rule astigmatism and that's why i am going to take a temporal scleral incision now side port is made and the anti chamber is filled with ovd 2% hpmc now entry is made from this temporal incision you can see that the the scleral tunnel is very close to the limbus just 0.5 to 1 mm so it will induce some amount of with the rule astigmatism as it flattens the horizontal meridian i enlarge that scleral incision to 6 mm and now i am going to rotate this eye well into the anterior chamber the eye is already vitrectomized anti vitrectomy has been done properly so you can see there is no vitreous there i was just checking after rotation of the eye where the whether the eye center and it was centering all right but of course i have to exchange this because of the refractive surprise as well but i think redialing the il is also another option of course here uh, here i don't want to take another chance the patient was quite worried about the glares and so now this is the method to remove the il from the anterior chamber one sinski hook underneath the il optic and another sinski hook, hook was pulling the il out this way you avoid it getting stuck in the incision or avoid getting the iris incarceration while removing the iol so this is a smooth way to remove the pmma iol from the eye now let's think why this iol was decentered so i just measured it the haptic you can see the one haptic is 2.1 mm away from the optic while the other side is 2.9 mm so that indicates that while inserting this pmma iol many times what surgeons do is that they use the haptic to push in the iol and that may sometimes lead to little bit of kinking of the haptic so on the one side the haptic is a bit bent and may not be easily detectable unless uh, you actually see the haptic position from the optic so here it's clearly visible that on one side the haptic is much closer to the optic as compared to other side and probably this is the reason why in this case 
that the aisle was decentered because otherwise if the haptics are good I think this aisle would have centered very well in the eye now I am going to use a three piece foldable IOL even the three piece PMMA IOL will do if it is available so these PMMA haptics are much better for sulcus placement because of their springy action they fit into the sulcus well now I can directly insert it in the anterior chamber as well because I already made 6 mm large scleral tunnel but here I decided to inject it through the B cartridge sometimes it's easier to do it this way and the uh, important thing is to let this IOL open in the anterior chamber and do not try to push it into the sulcus in the first go because sometimes the haptic may just pass into the bag and may go into the vitreous if you are not careful so first let it open in the anterior chamber and then you carefully rotate the haptics into the sulcus just watch how the haptic goes into the sulcus touching the pupillary margin that's very important there should not be any gap between the pupillary margin and the haptic when you are rotating it into the sulcus otherwise again it might just go into the bag and may drop into the vitreous so now both the haptics are in the sulcus the anterior CCC margin is not small enough to do the optic capture so I have to leave it in the sulcus itself without optic capture now I have done the biometry using optical biometer Ilmaster 700 for sulcus placement I generally re reduce the IL power by 5% so if it was a 20 diopter emetropic IL power I will put 90 diopters in the sulcus wound is sutured uh, with not so tight sutures just to avoid any gap as this is a partially vitrectomized eye so we don't want any AC collapse in the post-operative period these sutures are buried into the sclera and wound is closed you can see that the aisle is now nicely centered and patient did quite well patient got 6-6 uh, unaided vision the biometry was perfect the scleral incision reduced the astigmatism by 1.5 diopter and giving a perfect post-operative result so let me know your comments whether you use this aisle very often into the sulcus and how are the results thank you